Last night, during a static fire test of Starship's upper stage and before engine ignition, a catastrophic anomaly resulted in the loss of the vehicle, and with it, a good chunk of the test stand. In various videos showcasing the aftermath, you can see some of the damage done to the test stand itself, along with some of the propellant tanks and infrastructure. We also got more insight into the cause, with comments from Elon suggesting a COPV tank could have been responsible. Well, Flight 10 of Starship was setting up for a launch as soon as the end of this month, that obviously is no longer the case, as SpaceX begins working on the next ship. Here I'll go more in depth into the aftermath, possible causes, the next launch, and more. With the test occurring at night, it was obvious based on the fact that the entire site was engulfed with flames that there was going to be some damage to various infrastructure, but it wasn't exactly clear its extent. That was until this morning, when we got some much better views. In a video provided by Raptor Roost Texas, we can see some of the aftermath close up. At the start of the video, you can see the test stand that Ship 36 was atop before the anomaly. After the fact, its core structure is still standing, but it's heavily damaged and covered in all sorts of debris. You can get a much better idea of what was lost by comparing it to some of the images and video before the test. For example, looking at an image provided by SpaceX, you can see the structure on the river side of the site, which acts both as an access point with stairs leading to the top, but also where SpaceX connects various plumbing for a test. Looking at the aftermath, this is all destroyed, with no part of the structure even above the main four-leg pad, as it was all lost in the fire. Obviously, with these parts of the pad being the closest to the ship, they got the worst of it. Again, looking at the image from before on a prior static fire, you also have that same plumbing which leads from the ship to the actual propellant tanks. Due to its location, just about right under the ship, these were also destroyed in the fire. Focusing back on the new video, they pan over to the left near the water, where it looks like a fire from the previous night is still smoldering hours later. You can see ship debris scattered everywhere on the bank, the test site, and the surrounding environment. They then pan back to the right, and we get to see some of the tanks positioned closest to the ship, which are clearly charred from the fire. While not ideal, out of all the tanks, which are comprised either of water for the deluge system or propellant for the ship, they seem to have held up quite well structurally, but that might not mean they're fine. Feed lines will no doubt have been damaged, and it's unclear whether debris punctured any larger tank, and or compromised the system, requiring either a lengthy repair or a replacement. Again, in the background, you can even see in the morning there's still smoke rising into the air. It's also important to point out that this video is being taken on a river that separates the United States and Mexico border in southern Texas. This is worth noting because when they turn the camera around, showing debris on the other side of the river, this is actually Mexico, not the US. Even though the video just shows one large piece on the shore, it's very possible that even more debris landed on that side of the river. Finally, at the end of the video, we get a good view of a hill nearby with all of its vegetation burned off. The fire was massive, so some extra fires in the surrounding area are expected. Fortunately, the entire test site is basically fully encased by water, which no doubt helped keep everything contained to a certain extent. Looking back at the test stand, this is likely where the majority of SpaceX's time will be spent when repairing the pad. This has to do with the fact that not only is it the closest to the massive fireball, but it also contains quite a bit of complex infrastructure. I already pointed out the feed lines and propellant connection, but there's also the water deluge system. The water deluge sprays out massive amounts of water right before and during engine ignition. During a single engine static fire of the same ship that was lost just days prior, you can see the system in action before the engines ignite. It's positioned lower in the test stand and highlights that it's much more than just four metal legs holding up a ship. With all this in mind, it will likely take a few months for SpaceX to repair the site. On the bright side, the company does have some experience in this regard. Back on the first flight of Starship, the Super Heavy booster did some serious damage to the pad, taking out a massive chunk of concrete and shooting it in every direction. Only a few months after that, the pad was not only repaired, but also improved. On the test site, soon we'll see a cleanup effort and then teams analyzing the damage. From there, feed lines will be replaced, tanks repaired or altered, and the majority of work will go toward the main test stand, water deluge, core pad systems, etc. SpaceX does have other sites they can use for testing in the meantime, however, it's definitely not the best case scenario. As far as an impact on the next flight test, SpaceX was aiming for a launch in just weeks. In fact, only days ago, we got an actual targeted launch date of June 29th, with a backup opportunity on the 30th. This obviously is no longer the case, with SpaceX now needing to get the next ship ready for flight. Realistically, Flight 10 will be a few months from now. After the anomaly, SpaceX released a statement saying, On Wednesday, June 18th, at approximately 11 p.m. CT, the Starship preparing for the 10th flight test experienced a major anomaly while on the test stand at Starbase. A safety clear area around the site was maintained throughout the operation, and all personnel are safe and accounted for. Our Starbase team is actively working to safe the test site and the immediate surrounding area in conjunction with local officials. There are no hazards to residents in the surrounding communities, and we ask that individuals do not attempt to approach the area while safing operations continue, they said. 
When looking at specific images of the anomaly, it was clear that it started toward the top of the ship. What was initially thought to be related to downcomers for the header tank could have instead been a COPV. Hours ago, Elon Musk tweeted saying, Preliminary data suggests that a nitrogen COPV in the payload bay failed before its proof pressure. If further investigation confirms that this is what happened, it is the first time ever for this design. For context, a COPV, or composite overwrapped pressure vessel, is a tank consisting of an initial liner that's wrapped in composite materials to provide strength. As the name suggests, they're meant to withstand very high pressures. The comment from Elon suggests that a COPV tank toward the top of the vehicle failed, causing it to burst violently, leading to a mixing of propellants in the ship and the loss of the vehicle. Again, we see Starship V2 having a hard time. On a few of the last test flights, the same variant of ship has been lost. On flight 8, approximately five and a half minutes into its ascent burn, a flash was observed in the aft section of the vehicle near one of the center Raptor sea level engines, followed by an energetic event that resulted in the loss of the engine. Immediately after, the remaining two center Raptor engines and one of the Raptor vacuum engines shut down and the vehicle control authority was lost. Telemetry from the vehicle was last received approximately nine and a half minutes into the flight, or a little more than two minutes following the first flash observation, at which point all engines had shut down. More recently, on Flight 9, a subsequent attitude control error resulted in bypassing the Raptor relight and prevented Starship from getting into the intended position for re-entry. Starship then went through an automated safing process to vent the remaining pressure. Contact with the vehicle was lost approximately 46 minutes into the flight. There are only a few more Starship V2s left before the company plans to move on to Starship V3. SpaceX is hoping that with an updated vehicle, engines, and other core components, they can begin launching Starship very consistently and without anomalies. The company was quoted saying, Starship is designed to fundamentally change and enhance humanity's ability to reach space. The step change in capability won't happen overnight and progress towards this goal won't always come in leaps. But by putting hardware into a real-world environment as frequently as possible while still maximizing controls for public safety, progress can be made to achieve the goal of flying a reliable, fully and rapidly reusable rocket. Not long from now, we can expect an in-depth update from the company explaining not only what happened, but its impact to various schedules and the future Starship program. Either way, this is another setback, and something SpaceX will need to work on as they continue to develop this next-generation vehicle. After a significant anomaly on the test stand, a massive fire engulfed the surrounding infrastructure and shot debris everywhere. The damage is serious, but SpaceX has dealt with a similar scenario before and should have the pad up and running in a few months from now. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.